What's up, Internet? My name is Craig Lowen. I'm here to talk to you today about the newest feature coming to the Windows subsystem for Linux, or WSL. This feature is just for WSL2, so if you haven't heard about what that is, you can take a look at this link below, aka.ms slash WSL2, and it'll give you all the info you need. So without further ado, let's dive into this feature, which is memory reclamation. So this is the workspace that we have today. On the left, I have Windows Terminal running the Debian distro. On the right, we have Task Manager with a highlight on the VM mem process. This is the virtual machine process that powers all of your WSL2 distros. And we're taking a look at how much memory is consumed on the Windows side with this value here. And on the bottom right, we have the Windows Terminal again on the Debian distro. And we have a script running here that's watching how much memory is in use in our distro and how much memory is cached in our distro. What cache memory means is whenever you access a file in Linux, the location or the page of that file is cached for you and stored as well. Uh, this improves file performance over time. So let's jump right into our demo. On the left, you can see that I have a simple C file. And inside of the contents of that, you will see that all we're doing is allocating a lot of memory. C alloc will allocate this memory and initialize it for us. And we're waiting for input, and then we're freeing it after that. So if we actually compile and then run this, it'll allocate the memory. You'll see the use memory jump up on the Windows terminal on the right. And of course, the memory inside of Windows has also jumped up to about 3 gigabytes. And where this feature comes into play is before in WSL, when you allocated a lot of memory inside of a process inside of Linux, your VM would expand. But after this was done allocating, your VM would not shrink back down. So now when I enter some input, you can see our Linux memory will shrink back down to 58 megabytes, and so does our WSL2 VM memory. So all in-use memory is automatically returned back to your Windows host, and now the VM will grow and shrink as you need it. But this is only part of the story of how this new feature works. So what we can do is go back to my home directory, and I'm going to start up the Docker daemon. From here, now I have Docker running, and I have a Docker test that I'm just going to quickly run. And so what we're going to do is actually do docker compose app build. This will build a bunch of different containers to power my project. So this project actually has a Mongo database in it, as well as a Redis database in it, and my Node.js website to communicate with all of them. So we're going to pull the images, build it, and see how much memory we use. And we're going to speed the section up a little bit so you don't have to watch everything be built in real time. So now that it's finished building, let's open up the website and actually take a look at what's running. I'm going to go to localhost 3000, and here's my really simple app. We have the Redis database powering how many times this app has been viewed, as well as the ability to add items here like one, two, three, and view them. So just a really simple demo app. And you can see that the memory in use has jumped up to 363 megabytes, while our cache memory has jumped up to almost 2 gigabytes. This is because as we built these Docker images, we accessed a lot of different files, and now they are inside of the Linux cache. So I'm going to stop our website, and I'm going to stop the Docker containers, make sure everything is down. And from here, I'm going to stop our Docker daemon from running. And now you can see our in-use memory has dropped to 65 megabytes, and our cache memory is still sitting at 1.7 gigabytes. So you can see that the virtual machine memory has dropped inside of Windows. This is because we have deallocated some in-use memory. But overall, it's still 2 gigabytes. This is because we have cache memory still in Linux. This Linux is still storing caches of all the different files that you've accessed. And we don't want to get rid of these because that makes your Linux system performant. However, this will go away normally as Linux does in regular processes. So if I go ahead and close these different windows and go back just to PowerShell, um, over time, Linux will deallocate that cache memory and it will be automatically returned back to you and for use inside of your Windows machine. And just like that, our virtual machine is still running, but this memory has been deallocated and now we're back down to 648 megabytes. So I'm going to open up our distributions backup just to take another look at how you can get rid of these caches if you so wish. So I'm going to use sudo su to become the root user in my distribution. From there, I'm going to echo 3 into slash proc slash sys slash vm slash drop caches. This will drop all the caches that I have inside of Linux. And my cache memory drops back down to 24 megabytes. And that's returned back inside of my virtual memory inside of Windows. And now we're back sitting at 628 megabytes. 
So how this actually works is we are returning contiguous small blocks of memory back to the Windows host. And if you're keen to see what's happening behind the scenes, if you open up dmessage, you'll see that there's a new message there, WSL2 performing memory compaction. Here we are compacting your memory inside of your WSL2 distro to make sure that there are contiguous blocks that are be available to be returned back to the Windows host. This will only run when your CPU is in, in a non-loaded state, so that means you're not running anything. I hope you've enjoyed this video showing you how you can use your WSL2 distro to grow and shrink in memory size as you use your different Linux workflows in it. If you want to learn more about WSL in general, check out aka.ms slash WSL docs. And if you want to see everything command line in Windows, you can check out our blog at aka.ms slash CLI blog. And if you have any other general questions, feel free to follow me and ping me on Twitter. I'm at Craig Alone. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.